You will never grab an audience of people if the core element of your game is sloppy and amateurish. It will be better to have amazing combat in black room than shitty combat in lush forest. Hi guys, welcome back. In this devlog, we will be reading some comments from our previous devlogs and we will be reacting to them. Also, by the end of this video, we will be developing features that you guys have suggested, so stick around. I would love to hear some feedback from you guys. You see, one of my goals is to make Wistlight a game that is community driven. I want you guys to be part of its creation. For those of you who are new here, I'm June, a solo indie game developer from the Philippines, and I'm making a reverse RPG game where you play as a monster instead of the usual RPG game heroes. In our game, you play as a wisp who can transform into different monster types to fight human invaders exploiting resources from your island home. For anything else, I would like to thank you guys for the overwhelming support that you've given me from our previous devlog where I explained how I lost the job that's been funding Wisplite's development. Your support increased the channel's subscriber count from 700 to 943 as of recording this video. Some of you guys also supported me via Patreon, and my family and I want to extend our gratitude for all your help. Thank you so much. So let's begin. Let's start by reading some comments from our older devlogs. Just to set the right expectations, I will not be reading all the comments since there are a lot of them and our time is limited. So I'll just read and react to the comments that need to be talked about. Let's start with this one. So we have here from DV Compton. Yo, what if failing to stop an enemy from returning to their settlement will initiate a hunt? Hunts could be stronger and more dangerous than wild encounters and perhaps they become less powerful when the leader is slaughtered. Maybe a hunt is always led by an NPC that managed to survive your last battle. So yeah, actually we are planning on making the hunt a feature for our game. When our enemies flee, they will go to the nearest settlement and they will alert all the NPCs there, alerting that there's a monster nearby. So there are two scenarios that will happen. So first scenario, if your health is low, they will initiate a hunt and they will try to, to search for you within the surroundings. Second scenario is if your health is not that low or if it's high, they'll perform a defensive stance where they will patrol all around the settlement, try to defend it from surprise attacks. So there's a reason for us to stop the enemies from fleeing. So we have here a comment from JMA3038. So. He's asking, how many wish lists did you get the day you opened your Steam page, I wonder. Previously, I created a devlog where I made my Steam page. I made it in advance so that I can get early wish lists from people who are interested in our game. So on the day I posted that video, I gained around 20 wish lists. And every day it's been increasing, especially every time I post new devlogs to the channel. So as of the moment, we have 200 wish lists for Wisplight. So for those of you guys who wants to support us, you can already wishlist Wisplight in Steam. So thank you so much for wishlisting Wisplight. So we have here a question from Hokokoto Kokoto. Do you come from video game development studio because it seems to be top level in terms of programming? So actually, I'm not from a game development studio and this is my actually my first experience developing a game. But I do have previous experience in programming since my previous job for 8 years is a web developer. So right now, as most of you know, I'm doing full-time game dev. So we have here another comment, a comment from Sunny. Lol, I have two ideas. One, the enemy down ask for rescue. Two, others come and one goes to the front and defend and other rescue the fallen until each distance and heal. 2. A magic that the enemy can't recover or aid another one, so you can kill them to revive a skeleton to your army. So, uh, for the first question, we'll be making a feature that if you hit the Acolyte, they will run and try to defend the Acolyte so that uh, players will not prioritize the Acolyte more often. So as for reviving the skeleton to your army, maybe we, we can make a skill for that one, but a very high tier skill. A skill that is tailored for the necromancer type skeleton where you can revive a skeleton from corpses but I think it will be a very high tier spell since reviving skeletons for your army is very powerful. So we have here a comment from our mercenary guard video from Davy Compton. 
It might be interesting if the wizard had a passive ability which slows your movement or lessens your resources in some way. The active ability will be healing for warrior types. So a follow up comment. It might be interesting if the wizard gives a magical buff to the enemy party like life drain or something. Adding priest class that is able to debuff or the protagonist harm it directly unlike the wizard. So this is a very old comment. Uh, but actually, right now we have the Acolyte and it has a debuff spell. So we'll be giving it only a debuff spell since the Acolyte is the lowest form of wizard for our game. So we'll be adding more wizard types in the future which will give other skills like healing or support skills or a maybe a paladin which has healing spells or shield spells that supports their teammates. Definitely we'll be adding those in the future. So we have here a comment from Anti Josha. I love this game idea and wanted to make sim something similar in Unreal Engine 4 in the past. Some suggestions from my side would be different moving speeds for the mercenaries like quicker type with less armor and a simple random variation. They look more like robots moving the same and the animations tend to differ more if the animation is moving in different speeds too. A hunter type which uses traps and tends to avoid skirmishes, stands far in the rear and gains more quick fear to run away. A leader type, a captain who encourages his allies and a radius around him with heavy fear melee when he dies and the team does not work together anymore. An enchanter who power up the weapons or defense of his allies but very weak in skirmish as strong as his power is. A carrier, a non-combatant but essential for the mercenary troops. If he dies and the rations are destroyed, they tend to become more desperate and loses the ability to heal minor wounds. A noble with two different qualities, one for subjugating the anomaly with his private army, ready to fight, called to arms when the danger of your kind becomes too great. Another overseeing the island as territory. But both deaths leads to chaos and hunt you for your head. The danger of the noble is his ability to call to arms, high danger and getting attention like above said danger like GTA police stars. Thank you for this very long and insightful comment. So let's try to dissect one by one. So first as for the moving speed, we actually fixed this already. We made the torchbearer more quicker than the mercenary guards as well as the Acolyte. The Acolyte is now more evasive and is more quicker than the regular mercenary guards. So we already fixed this one. As for the Hunter type, yeah, we'll be making a Hunter type surely in the future since we will have hunt events. So there are different types of Hunters that we will be adding to the game and these Hunters will have their very own factions. For example, there will be a faction for Hunters that specializes in traps. So their goal is to set up traps in dungeons and they'll try to ambush you and the gameplay mechanics for the player is for you to detect the traps first so that you will not fall into an ambush. Definitely there will be hunter factions for the game. So as for the leader type captain, we'll be adding this type of NPC to the kingdom guards where they will make a shield wall and there's a captain behind that commands them. And if you try to defeat the captain, they will have difficulty forming their formations. As for the enchanter, maybe we can add this one also. Maybe for, for a nature type, like a druid type faction where they utilize the magic of the life essence to, to power up their weapons. I'm very sure that we'll be adding the hunters and the captains and maybe the enchanter types. So again, thank you Anti Josha for your very insightful comment. So we have here another comment from Anti Josha. Reminds me of Serena from Skyrim in Far Better or Dark Millennia vibe. So I actually posted a an image for Cassandra. And actually Cassandra is inspired by the Emerald Herald from Dark Souls 2. But a bit gloomier and darker. So this is her design. And Cassandra will be your companion and she'll be helping you build your dungeon and uh, level up your skills. 
We have here from Yamata Norochi. What about adding dogs that can detect you at greater distance than humans to make stealth more challenging? So as of the moment, I will not be adding additional creatures like dogs or other type of creatures because we have very limited resources for our game and adding new creatures to the game means adding more animations and more models. As of the moment, we'll be prioritizing humanoid animations and humanoid characters. So we have here from Cory Farr. Wow, so glad I stumbled on this devlog today. I just binged them all. I was working on a dungeon manager game with similar idea where you play as the bad guys and have to defend against parties of heroes doing the classic dungeon crawl. Had to put the project on hold for now, but it's cool to see someone with a similar idea. I know you're still early in development, but if you want to chat about music, I'd love to connect. I'm a games composer and medieval fantasy is my absolute favorite genre to work in. I think it would be cool to design unique soundtrack that captures the darker fantasy style like The Witcher, but with a sinister twist since you are the monster, not the monster hunter. I've already got some ideas, so if when you're ready, I'd love to send you a copy of my demo reel. So actually I've reached out with Cory and we collaborated and he made some samples for the background music and it's really good. Actually. Corey is a very talented composer and this is actually his page. You can check out his page if you're interested. So he's actually very good in making background music but I told Corey that as of the moment since I lost my job, I can no longer continue to fund the background music so we placed it on hold. So yeah, so maybe in the future if I have enough funding, we can make background music for the game. So as of the moment, background music is not yet a priority, as well as uh, the other sound. My goal for now is to polish the combat mechanics and the skill system so that we can create a working demo for the combat. So we have here from Matty Ghost Game Dev. I just got done binging your videos. Your project looks awesome and I look forward to seeing it progress. You think you'll make a demo or playtest version soon? Uh, once I finish with the combat and the skill system, uh, the goal is to make a working demo. It should compose of the entire combat system, some parts of the skill tree, maybe a boss fight, and maybe a small settlement where you can try and capture, and maybe some parts of the dungeon mechanics. That's the plan for the first ever demo. So we have here from Nigga Weird. Hey, good job on the torchbearers. I would like to see a rare enemy who would look like a normal torchbearer, except that he could spit fire with a bottle of alcohol. It could be a bad surprise for the player. It might even be a unique enemy for another enemy type idea. I suggest a spearman. The spear is a weapon used for hunting. It will be logical for warriors to use it in an unknown forest. Actually, I'm thinking about an enemy. It's like Juzo from Sekiro where he can spit fire and make his sword on fire. So I think I will be making him the first boss for the first settlement that we'll be conquering. The plan is to make a small settlement where this boss is the captain of. I'm planning on making his faction the faction of the tree hunters where their goal is to eliminate ants or trends in the dark forest. So their main goal is to hunt down the, the tree creatures for our game. So the design for this faction is they utilize fire. So that's why this boss spits flame and makes his sword on fire. And his minions will have a spear and the tip of their spear, they can light it on fire. And most of them, I, I think the design for them, thinking of having them bare naked from the waist up so that they will not catch on fire. So that's my main design idea for the tree hunters. I think the tree hunters and the boss, the leader of the tree hunters, will be part of the demo. So we have here from Andreas. You should probably try to implement auto-generated characters. It will be much better for the future when you will have too many characters to manually create and it will remove the repetitiveness. Beside that, I think you have an amazing game. Obviously, I assume that everything might still change, but I feel like AI still feel like AI and not players. Imagine your idea is that you are the monster in someone else's game. If that's true, then it feels like you are some sort of hero with all the fancy moves, while the AI are still very slow and it seems just bots. Anyway, awesome job on the game. So 
this is from a very old devlog from the Torchware devlog where the AI behaviors for the mercenary group is still very basic. So right now I actually uh, added a lot of behaviors for the enemy AIs. So for example, they will try to rush towards you if you're crippled or if you're trying to fight the acolyte, you'll try to save the acolyte. So we've, we've added some new behaviors for them right now and maybe I think they look better now compared to before. So we have your comment from Auntie Josha again. I now had another idea because what would be the end game content be? You expand your fallout like bases and expel the humans. A large scale project as a goal where you put all the resources you've collected into it and push it to expand your realm. My idea would be a dungeon core, some kind of overwhelming collective consciousness fed by the magic knots of the island. Since it's difficult to program constructions underground, I'd like to suggest a tower. What would a magic based entity want? The long term goal for the game is actually to conquer the human settlements that are built around the island. And these settlements are guarded by different bosses and different factions. So that's the end game content. You'll build your wisp to transform into different monster types and you will upgrade your skills. You'll try to find other wisps so that they can merge with you. So you can assign it to make your monster more powerful or you can assign it to grow your dungeon to support your monsters. So basically the main idea is to get rid of the human settlements settling all around your island. So we have here from Non and Null and Zero. One of the things that annoys me in games is how rare non-damage focus attacks moves are in non-strategy games. It's so much cooler to throw in some debuffs, buffs, and repositioning moves. On a different note, have you considered making a discord? So on the first comment, I really planned on making the Acolyte's magic as a debuff with no damage at all since giving it damage will make it more OP. So since the Acolyte is the lowest type of wizard, we'll just give him a debuff that cripples you. It also is very strong since the debuff lasts for a very long time. So it's around 3-5 to five seconds. Enough for the mercenary group to destroy you. As for Discord, I already have made a Discord channel but I haven't managed it yet since I'm still very busy with making the game at the same time making videos for the channel. We have here a comment from Dendon. A suggestion allow the enemies to friendly fire each other adds to realism in tactics especially if it's just one player against many. Another is to vary enemy attacks and have them randomly choose which to perform. You seem to be making a game I've been wanting to play. All the AI stop fear factor and morale playing as the supposed bad guy etc. Best of luck and will 100% buy at launch to support you. Thank you so much for the support. As for your first suggestion, adding friendly fire to the enemies uh, would be disadvantageous for the enemies since our player is already OP. As for the enemies varying attacks, as of the moment, the mercenary guards only has one type of attack for the normal attacks, but they do have a charge attack where they sprint towards you and try to hit you. As of the moment, we are limited with very few animations since our budget is limited for the game. But in the future, we'll be adding more enemy attacks for future type of enemies. I want the mercenary guards animation to be very basic since the mercenary group is the most basic enemy group in our game. So they're actually the lowest enemy group in our game. So we don't want them to be that complicated or complex. We want them to be simple. We want them to be predictable and easy for new players. The complex combat animations will be reserved for bosses and for other NPC types in the future. So we have here from Sunny. Your game is the new Skyrim. Very well done mechanics. Thank you so much Sunny. It's an honor to be, be described as a new Skyrim. Actually, Skyrim is one of the inspirations to make Wisp Light. Being compared to Skyrim is a very great honor. So we have here from Tree Ghost. I love it. I think one thing you could change is making the skeleton look cooler with like clothes because now the skeleton looks kind of weak. So in a design perspective, it's actually on purpose that I made this skeleton look weak since in most RPG games that we play, skeletons are really weak, right? So in our game, our skeleton should look weak also. But I have a plan to add armor to the skeleton, but I'm planning on making it as a skill, a passive skill, where you can equip armor to your skeleton and your skeleton army. 
but you need first to complete a certain skill tree for the armor since um, the armor should have different skill trees and you need to complete the skill tree for the armor at a certain point and at the same time complete a skill tree for the skeleton at a certain point also to unlock a special combination skill that allows the skeleton to wear armor. We have here from Kent Louis Liana. I really look forward to an archer or someone that carries crossbow within the mercenary group that would try to snipe the player when the player would try to approach the acolyte to make the player more careful of its surroundings when attacking the acolyte. Adding archer to the mercenary group would be too OP for the player. I plan on adding archers in settlements where they can stand on the walls or on towers. But as of the moment, the, the mercenary group is complete. Like we have the mercenary guard, the torchbearer, and the acolyte. Uh, that's the basic composition for the mercenary group. So we have here a comment from Entreped once. Here's a sort of design 101 bit of advice. Every idea that you have can generate exponential complexity. You need to confine your ideas to very basic things so you can expand upon them. If you're making an action combat game, you shouldn't develop literally any other aspect of the game beyond its combat mechanics until you have them fun, engaging, rewarding, and deep. The core of your game is literally how fun the combat is, so it needs to be the focus of everything. Always remember that a game is just that, a game. You will never grab an audience of people if the core element of your game is sloppy and amateurish. It will be better to have amazing combat in Black Room than shitty combat in Lush Forest. Intrepid ones, you have very insightful comments and I agree on all of them. But as a YouTuber, I think visuals also is one of the selling points in having your videos interesting. As much as I want to focus on the combat in a white plain room, I want it to be in the forest so that I can show the audience what it really feels like to play the game within the forest. So I really understand your concerns that you need to polish the combat first, you make it fun, but I also want to touch on the mood of the game. That's why I always showcase the landscape, I always polish the, the reflections of the water. I know that it's not really important in gameplay perspective, but I want to show this to the community. So we have here from Happy Wolf. This looks really good. The next behavior I would add would be to make the troops spread out a bit. Give them a one to three foot radius around themselves that they will walk away from another guy in their group. When they all rush in, they bunch up and it also breaks the illusion. Then when they get really close to you, they might also want to surround you instead of all attacking from one angle. Perhaps designate 8 slots around you that they try to occupy the closest one to them while sneaking around you. Maybe add a rogue class that ties to sneak to the farthest slot and get behind you. Again, looks great. I will be wishlisting. Thank you so much Happy Wolf for wishlisting our game on Steam. So as of the moment, the mercenary group, if they're in engage mode, they will try to circle around you. They will, will try to go to the left or the right and try to circle around the player and if they're near enough they will try to engage and attack you that's the the basic behavior as of the moment i haven't thought about making eight slots around the the player i don't know maybe we will be making a different behavior for that for a different enemy type in the future since changing the ai behavior right now for the mercenary group will be a uh, huge work for me so i think we'll stick with the current behavior for the the circling of the enemy uh, most of the players will try to prioritize the Acolyte since the mercenary group has a debuff spell that cripples you and uh, silence you from attacking. In this devlog, we will make the Acolyte more evasive at the same time. Have the rest of the mercenary group try to rush you if you try to eliminate the Acolyte first. So this will have the player in defensive mode while attacking the Acolyte. So let's first change the old animation for the Acolyte where he just moves backwards slowly to a faster one where he will try and run backwards. We can simply modify this by changing the animation in our Acolyte animation controller. Now let's test it. As you can see, the Acolyte's new movement prevents us from stun locking the Acolyte. Let's check the old movement and compare it to the new one. The old movement easily stun locks the Acolyte since his running backward movement is too slow that the skeleton's attack could catch up. With a new moving animation, it will prevent the skeleton's attack from reaching him if he runs backward faster. To make it more challenging, let's make the Acolyte evade the player when you try to hit him while he's moving backwards. We can do this by adding more animations and behaviors when the Acolyte is hit. Now let's test it. 
as you can see, the Acolyte is more nimble, and if you try to hit him while he's running back, he will do a quick dodge, evading the player's attack. Now for the final behavior. We want our mercenary group to sprint towards the player if the player is attacking the Acolyte. So what I did is simply utilize the existing behavior where they charge at the player when the player gets crippled. So I made a function that tells all the enemies in the group that the Acolyte is under attack and their sprint behavior will be called making them run towards the player fast. I also added a timer that locks this behavior when you attack the Acolyte for a certain time and releases the enemies from sprinting if this timer is down. Also from our previous update, the sprinting behavior for the enemies are also tied with their stamina. Therefore, if there are enemies with low stamina, they will not sprint towards you if you attack the Acolyte. So as you can see here in our battle, the dynamics for the mercenary group is centered around the Acolyte. If the player tries to prioritize the Acolyte first, the player will be forced to back down as soon as the rest of the mercenary group sprints and tries to defend the Acolyte. Having added these two behaviors, namely the new evasion behavior for the Acolyte, as well as the sprinting behavior for the rest of the enemy group, will have the player frequently reposition to bring the Acolyte down. Also, as you've noticed, the Acolyte still has a very high health for an opponent with no armor. In future devlogs, we'll bounce that out and nerf the Acolyte's health. As for now, let's leave him be. While we watch the rest of the battle, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons for supporting me in my game development journey. I'll leave our Patreon link below for those of you guys who wants to help fund Wisplite. All the funding raised from Patreon will 100% go to acquiring assets for the game. I also would like to thank you guys for engaging and interacting with the community in our comment section. Your feedback and insights really will help bring this game to its best version, so keep those comments coming. Also, let me know what you think of our new behaviors and please do like the video to help spread this content to other viewers out there who might be interested in our game. And if you're new and you want to follow the development of Wisplite, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updated once new videos come out. On our next devlog, we'll continue with our comments reading series and we'll make features for the game from your comments and suggestions, just like what we did with this one. Till next time.